Ash Cakes, that two ingredient bread that's so simple and easy to make that you actually cannot mess it up. You literally just throw it into a fire. Maybe not quite like that, but not actually as far off as you'd think. So ash cakes, or fire cakes, were an incredibly quick and easy two ingredient bread recipe consisting of flour, water, and a little bit of salt. This food would have been a staple in the diet of American travelers and soldiers alike in the 18th century. Ash cakes were so common in fact they would have been consumed worldwide and for thousands of years before anyone even knew about the Americas. There are records all across the planet where they have been eating different versions of a flour and water based bread. It's spoken about in Genesis where they would make leavened bread and cook them on hot stones and serve them to the angels. And the Native American Indians would make a similar bread using cornmeal and baking them in hot leaves. Alright, now the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and build a campfire because we need to give our campfire a little bit of time for it to burn down so that it has a nice bed of coals because despite what Hollywood would have you believe, you don't actually cook over an open flame typically. That's reserved exclusively for marshmallows. Now that we've got our fire going, we can go ahead and start mixing up our batter. In this recipe, I ended up using about two cups of flour. You could also use cornmeal or any other flour you have available. And don't be afraid to add more or less flour just so that you can get the desired results depending on the type of flour that you use. Now this next step is optional but highly recommended, which is adding a couple teaspoons or pinches of salt. It really, really, really helps this dish out a lot. When you're dealing with exclusively flour, that little bit of salt brings out a little bit of nuttiness and imparts its own flavor which this dish so desperately needs. Next you want to add your rag water for a little bit of extra fiber. Now go ahead and start mixing your dough, and if you're anything like me and you don't like getting your hands dirty, buy yourself some gloves. Thank me later. In the meantime, you're going to want to mix this dough, not too hard, you're not really trying to form any gluten or anything like that, but you're just trying to form it all and mix it all together until you're able to form it into two or three nice little pita sized patties or really whatever shape you like. Now if you couldn't find a fire or just wanted to have a more modern ash cake, you could go ahead and make this on a pan like you would a pancake, but for my money I'm going to go outside and cook it on the coals because that extra char really does give it some flavor. So it seems our campfire has died down, and now we're going to spread it apart so that we have a nice even bed of coals to lay our ash cake on. Now the trick is that we're going to lie it down really softly so that we don't have any coal or ash more than necessary sticking to the ash cake itself. Now once we lie it down, we're going to then gently cover it with a light layer of coals to cook it on top at the same time. But you want to be able to let it breathe a little bit so that you're able to see whether or not it's done. <laughs> Otherwise, you're gonna have a black cake and you can't find it. All right, so here's the finished product. It looks pretty good. It's not as burnt as other ones that I've made, I gotta say. Um, yeah, so let's just go ahead and give this thing a try. I could have cooked it a little bit longer. <laughs> That's probably why it's not very black. But even still, it's pretty gosh darn good, albeit plain. All the flavors aren't objectionable. It's a little bit chewy. All in all, I'd rather eat this than bugs, or nothing I suppose would be um, also equally awful. Um, yeah, it's quite good. I'm going to get a good bite of the uh, black bit here, because I have a feeling that the more burnt it is, the better it's going to taste. And I'm not going to go that deep, so maybe it's cooked all the way through. Mmm. Okay. Yeah. Cook it way more than you think. If the whole thing is covered in char, mmm. It is so much better, let me tell you. Mm. It's like if you ever go and get a stone oven baked pizza. Oh my goodness. With some butter or some olive oil. Oh my God. This would be absolutely delectable. 
All right. Well, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of the video. I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Cooking History, and I am super, super, super excited to share with you this next episode of Cooking History, where we are going to be exploring not just the creation of hardtack, but also some of its many uses, because seeing as it was a preservation method more than anything, it was also used as an ingredient for multitude of recipes, and I haven't seen very many videos out there on YouTube exploring some of those options. So I hope that you'll stick around and subscribe and uh, stay tuned for some of those new episodes.